Right now, I wanted us to have a, a view of of what is happening with um, with the actions. I really like these uh, these two. They're going to be using a chair um, for these actions. We're going to be doing a bit of a warm up, but then they're going to be showing us how to do a, a downward dog using not just one chair but two, and also a a chair assisted uh, lunge, a chair assisted um, warrior pose. But first, if, if you're if you'd rather stay seated, you can. Uh, I'm just going to have the sort of roll the shoulders a little bit because the, the downward dog action is going to involve our shoulders. So we roll it one way, and then we roll our shoulders the other way as well. So just a bit of movement of the shoulders, and then a little bit of a, of a twist and turn action of your body. You could do that seated as long as you want. You know, hit in the back of the chair with that action. So we're just loosening up a little bit. Now, the pose of downward dog, uh, when done in the traditional way, might be a little intense. For some people, the problems of wrists or the problems of knees or hips or back is a trouble. And I often reinterpret this pose of downward dog in a seated position for people. I'm going to show it to you using two chairs, and then I'll show you the single chair method of reinterpreting the downward dog. Now, in order for me to, uh, to tilt forward, I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to come forward in my chair so that my sitting bones are on the chair, but I'm not close to the back of the chair. That's going to allow me a little bit of less compression of the chair on the back of my legs. And I can also comfortably widen my legs apart so that my ribs are not going to come into hard contact with my thigh area. And the second chair is going to be relatively close to me. So I'm going to start by elongating. My low back is swaying. And first of all, I'm just going to come forward to bring my elbows onto my knees and have my hands lightly on this chair. I'm going to start next taking my hands and placing them more on the chair, stretching my arms forward. Now, if I had some bad shoulder issues, I'd probably leave it at this. But if I'm comfortable, I can move the chair maybe a little further back or slide my hands a little further forward. And you can tell as you're doing this that your shoulders will begin to stretch. And eventually, you may be able to bring it to the point that is in the downward dog posture of having the head in between the arms. Now, this is a perfectly fine position and uh, easy enough to escape by simply backing one arm at a time up until. I again am coming out of the position. As if this was the first time I've gone into that pose, I wouldn't stay there very long, just a comfortable amount of time. But if I'm a little bit more comfortable with it, I may get into it the same way, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up off this chair. I'm gonna back my heels up a little bit. So my knees are slightly more bent. I'm gonna come forward in the same way, keeping that low back moving toward the navel walking my hands outward, sliding forward, letting my head go between the arms. And if I'm comfortable, I can lift my hips up off this chair, but leave my knees rather bent. Of course, if that's unpleasant, my hips can stay down on the chair. And so that is completely assisted by the chair transitioning into lifting the hips up a little bit off the chair especially appropriate if a person was having a lot of trouble with balance. But if a person were more balanced, we could use a single chair. And I would put the chair against an object that was very steady and sturdy, such as this couch or against a wall. And if you're using the chair downward dog from this angle, what you do is you stand relatively close, making sure that your hand could touch the chair. And we're gonna put a lot of bend in our knees so that we stay comfortable. So we're elongating the spine. We're gonna come down a little bit, elbows to the knees, one arm at a time taken to the chair, and then perhaps bringing the head between the arms, move quite a bit of a crouch. We can stretch ourselves back if the chair will remain in place. I can pull my hips back a little bit, you can see the back legs of the chair coming away a little bit, which is just adding more stretch 
I could definitely be in a position with my elbows more bent. If I didn't like the heel down position, I could step back enough to have my heels up lifted. But the knees being bent is a very important aspect of this. To come out of it, I bring my hands in position. I may even walk forward, bringing myself up and out in a very safe way. So that is the downward dog done with just a single chair. Very nice, uh, really great if there's some kind of a wrist issue. For many people who have had problems with wrists or shoulders or elbows, learning that downward dog can be done, it's, it's such a nice release for the shoulders, for the neck, and for the back. But now we're going to create an action that is associated with, uh, with two poses, two traditional poses in yoga called the lunge and called the warrior pose. And we're gonna use a chair again for these poses. And this is very helpful if there's something going on in a way that doesn't allow us a lot of strength in our legs, or perhaps we have an ankle or foot injury. This is probably one of the better ways to do the pose and still get everything the pose can offer us. But instead of sitting in the chair the normal way, we'll be turning sideways in the chair. Now, all chairs are a little different. This would not work with a chair that had uh, arms on it, but I'm gonna turn sideways. I'm gonna turn it away that allows me to be halfway on and halfway off the chair. But I also know that chair seats don't necessarily match up with the length of legs. So I'm gonna sit so that my sitting bone is on the chair on one side. And this rest of my leg doesn't have to be on the chair, but I've gotta make sure that my knee is right over the ankle and that my foot reaches the floor. And if necessary, if, uh, if the chair was tall, I could take a block or something and place it underneath my foot so that my foot would come to the floor because I don't want to be in a position with my heel lifted and my toe down. I want the foot to be flat. And for, uh, for balance sake, I'm going to place my arm that's closest to the back of the chair on the chair and my other hand's going to be near the bottom of the chair. And the first thing I want to do is just to let this, this leg drift down. So this leg is not on the chair at all. It's, it's free to drift downward. I'm going to uh, lean forward onto the front leg, taking my chest forward and lengthening through the front of the body and stretching my back leg comfortably back. It's okay for the knee to be in quite a bend. If you're more comfortable and maybe even using blocks, you could bring your hands downward or just keep them on that front knee. And the back leg certainly can be stretched straight, heel reaching. And for those who, um, who are strong enough with this, then hands either down on the floor, hands on the block, we can put pressure on this front leg, back, back foot, and just lift some of our weight away from the chair. It's actually a, quite a strenuous action. The chair yoga, as we're doing right here, I'm just sort of pushing down, lifting the weight of my body off the chair, but not lifting my hip up higher. What a, what a very challenging action. We come up from that, lifting the chest up. Let's do this lunge on the second side. Let's understand it a little bit. So now we'll, uh, we'll come over to the second side turning in the chair here again, making sure that this knee is right over the ankle. My foot can be flat. I can hold the back of the chair, the underside of the chair, let my knee come down. That might be as much of a lunge as I can possibly work with. The idea of a lunge is the chest is reached a little forward. I can uh, have my hands on that front knee and experiment with stretching this leg further back. Maybe the leg goes straight, maybe it doesn't. It could definitely be a stretch in the foot area. If I'm comfortable, I can have a block so that I'm in more of a traditional position. If I'm very comfortable in this position, I can press into the legs and let myself lift a little bit up. I'm really not trying to come up off this chair very much. I'm just trying to take the weight off the chair. And it doesn't have to be 100% of my weight. It's a great way to strengthen someone who's uh, who's recovering just getting a little bit of the pressure off the chair to come out of it hands to the knees 
hands to the chair, <laughs> coming up and out of it. <laughs> now, another pose very similar to the lunge pose is called the warrior pose. <laughs> Just a second. Little dog control. Okay, so the pose similar to the warrior pose. Now, for that, we start off with the lunging position. We just don't lean forward. So, again, I'm going to turn in the chair, one leg on the chair, one leg off the chair. And I'm going to hold the back of the chair, the bottom of the chair, letting this knee point down. And the idea is that we uplift. So it's like a warrior one position. I'm gonna uplift, I'm gonna try and balance out my pelvis so I'm neither tilted to the floor or toward the back of the chair. And in this, the more this leg comes back, the more this front of the hip is gonna stretch so I can keep my hand on the back of the chair, keep my hand on the hip, elongate, and then step this leg a little further back. The more I stretch that leg back, the more I uplift the chest, the more this is going to open up, we might even get some seat muscle contraction. And indeed, I could have both of my hands on my hips, uplifting the chest. This back knee can be bent whatever amount we need to stay comfortable. And if you wanted the challenge of it, you can press and just take some of your weight off the chair. You don't have to remove all of it. Just uplift yourself a little bit. And what a challenge to stay at that angle and create that upward lift. Let's do that on our second side. So we turn. All right, leg on the chair, the other leg off the chair. To get that first, I hold the chair, I point the knee downward, and I try and level out the pelvis, neither dipping toward the floor nor uh, leaning upward higher than the, the side of the pelvis that's on the chair. And so I can elongate and I can work with stretching the leg backward. Make sure you're not feeling any jamming in the back. You're uplifted. If you need to tilt a little forward, that's fine. But in part, it's just don't straighten the legs so much that it's giving you an uncomfortable challenge. Both hands could be on the hips. And if you wanted to, you could push into that front heel. Make sure the knee's not beyond the ankle. And you could lift up a little bit. It's just a great way to work on form as well. Leg coming forward, and we can come out of that. 